Hello everyone. People have been asking me to make content detailing my thought process when playing Sword Soul, so I figured I might as well do just that. I'm not sure if this will be like a series, but uh, I'm not sure if this will be like a series, so if uh, there's interest I'll probably make more. So without further ado, let's get into the replay. So here we have a TCG replay against uh, a friend of mine who uh, is uh, a newcomer to the deck and I'm helping him uh, get used to the lines here. So this is a pretty good hand. We have Ecclesia, Ashuna, Bishuda, Didi Crow, and Taya. Okay, so uh, obviously the first thing you should do is uh, by leading with the Tenyis because like going Ecclesia first will uh, make you lose in permanence pretty much. So that's what I did. I lead with Ashuna. And then I try to go for a synchro 8 line with Vishuda in hand, as covered in the Master Guide. So Vishuda summon, Ashuna summon from deck. Now here, uh, there's like a, an interesting uh, point you should consider. You can easily make uh, Chaofeng from, this, from uh, this position, and then use Ecclesia in the order to get into your Sorcerer lines. Now that is a good play on paper, but uh, this uh, play loses to Impermanence and you will uh, uh, end on just a Chaofeng. And, you know, that's still safer than losing to the Biru. But uh, ending on just Chaofeng against a potentially unknown matchup, I mean, in this case, I already knew what my opponent was on, but I want uh, to, like, try to simulate this as a real TCG game where I don't really know what my opponent's on game one. So in this case, there is an argument to uh, going Chi Shao first. Uh, with uh, Vishuda and Adhara. And uh, that's what I should have done. Because like in the, my head, I uh, would uh, rather lose to Imperm than Nibiru. Uh, like for uh, the reason I said earlier. So the safer the, the safer play doesn't really end on anything if I get Imperm in that case. So I try to go for the Chisha line here, but which I should have. But here I make a misplay. I normal Ecclesia. Now, this play uh, loses uh, to quite. Uh, this play loses to Nibiru way harder than it should, because like what I should have done instead was made Chisha with Vishuda and Adhara, uh, and uh, from there, uh, wait. and from there I uh, can just search Long One and then use Long One in order to pitch the Ashuna that I would add back with Adhara and try to end on uh, a Synchro 8 and a Synchro 10 without using my normal summon. And if they do nip me, then I can just normal Ecclesia and then go for Moye into, for example, a Draco Berserker. And that would arguably be, uh, be safer since I at least end on uh, an interruption and I can just bounce the Nibiru to, with um, Bishuda. That way they can't really beat over the Draco Berserker, so I really should have done that in hindsight. But um, I guess like uh, I'm hoping that uh, this uh, also serves as some like a uh, practice to like know your plays, like uh, try to decide uh, what uh, you rather lose to, and uh, if you're trying to play around specific hand traps, then find the line that uh, plays around it the most while also letting you some uh, sort of, um, uh, I guess, backup plan, or at least something to end on. So, to uh, reiterate, I should have made Chi Xiao here, I should have added the long one, and then um, tried to end on a single 8 and a single 10 without my normal summon. And uh, if uh, my opponent nips me, then I still have uh, the normal summon, which is Ecclesia or Taya, and if they don't nip me, I still on end on a single 8 and a single 10, like Chi Chao and Chi Xing, and I save Ecclesia and Taya for next turn, which uh, is still very good. Now, uh, if my board gets broken, then I have Ecclesia to special herself, and Taya uh, is just uh, great in the grind game in general. So I go uh, Ecclesia here, go, go for Moye. Moye will reveal the Taya. Now, this will come up uh, later, as you'll see uh, when uh, I pass uh, to my opponent. And my opponent Veilers it which uh, is uh, what I was trying to play around. 
in hindsight should have made Xiaofan, then uh, Moe would have guaranteed resolve. But again, uh, you're not really aware of that information just yet. So I made Chi Xiao, I grab Long One. Or I grab Emergence first so I can have another uh, thing to target, to banish with uh, Long One, uh, with Chi Xiao just in case. I go at Hara, add back Ashuna. And then I just uh, make uh, Chi Xing. So this is um, still the uh, Synchro 8 and Synchro 10 board that I said earlier. But I use my normal summon, so this is uh, more vulnerable to nip. Which again, I should have uh, played around it more. Uh, like, I should have thought about uh, my sequencing uh, a lot more. So it's something that you should keep in mind. Oh, yeah, long burn for 12, and then I pass. Okay. So my opponent's hand is uh, two Ecclesias, Ashuna, Emergence, and Droplet. Um, this hand is very good going second, especially into my board, which has like no back row. And uh, they e very easily have a, a way to kill through this, uh, even through DD Crow on Ashuna, for example. And um, okay, so let's say I'm in uh, their position right now. I know that uh, Moye has revealed Taya in my opponent's hand. So that pretty much uh, guarantees that they have at most one interruption if uh, this droplet goes through, which it pretty much will. So if uh, my opponent only has one interaction pretty much, I'm going to try to make Boron as early as possible so that uh, that interaction basically doesn't stop me whatsoever. And if I already have an OTK line, then making Boron early would be better. But... Um, that's just uh, how I, I uh, thought uh, when I uh, first saw the sand. But uh, so let's see what uh, they did. So if they lead with Droplet immediately, sending Ecclesia and Ecclesia, which I completely disagree with. Uh, for one, they should have activated Emergence first, and then send a Droplet because uh, my friend didn't know that uh, you can send uh, an emergence uh, as it was uh, resolving and it will still go through. But not only that, they send Ecclesia and Ashu uh, they send both copies of Ecclesia. Even knowing that information, they should have sent uh, emergence instead, regardless, because like now, if uh, if uh, my last card in hand was an Ash, and my opponent activates emergence, they lose. Their only uh, play is Ashuna, and Ashuna is not doing anything to this board. It might uh, threaten like a monk uh, and into Shaman like, but Shaman wouldn't really have a reliable discard, I guess. I mean, it can discard the Ashuna that would, would be added back off of Atara, for example, but Shaman plus monk is not going to do anything against uh, 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 like my turn uh, 3 follow-up, which they know I already have a tie in hand. So yeah, that they definitely sequence that wrong. So they try to droplet my board, which you know goes through. They have to be immersions. And they search Tyre here. So Tyre you know, I guess it's fair to search Tyre because you want you could go for a Boxia into Moye line. But the problem with this play is that uh, it loses to both DD Crow and Valor. And I guess my opponent didn't really expect that, so that's why he probably w went for uh, the Taya. But uh, in most cases, I would probably still go for uh, Moye here. But I, I don't think it's incorrect. So the normal Taya, I DD crawl the emergence immediately. They have no targets. That's it. So I just uh, so they just attack over the Shishing and then uh, pass back to me. Now I just kill them because I have Taya, I have Chijiao, I pretty much have everything. And boom, Ibaxia, and then that's Lethal on board. So what could have the, they uh, done uh, differently with the sand? Well, I'm going to show you. Okay, so this is the exact same board state and hand that they started with. And uh, like I said before, this should be a pretty easy line uh, to kill, even through one hand trap like DD Crow. So, first I would activate Emergence to like uh, bait out the Ash. Uh, 
like I said earlier, I know that they have at most one interaction in, the, in their hand, so it's like it doesn't matter that much. So even the, if they ash this, I still have Ecclesia for the uh, Sword Soul line. So no response from them. I immediately uh, would uh, activate Droplet, standing Ecclesia and Emergence. That way to negate uh, the Chi Xiao and the Chi Xing. And uh, boom, uh, that's two threats down, only one threat to go in their hand potentially. And uh, as Emergence resolves, I would grab Long One here. Since I already have uh, Ecclesia for Moye and Taya, and I want to establish Baron early in case the hand trap is something threatening, like an Infect Veiler, for example. Okay, so I would special Ecclesia, an activate Long One, pitching the Ashuna, and grab a token. Now, if. Um, if my uh, opponent did this, did this play, if uh, I I would have immediately DD crowed uh, their Ashuna, just to like hopefully uh, hamper them a bit and make uh, their uh, board state a bit more awkward. But uh, as you will see, it uh, won't really matter that much. And this would be like the best spot to use DD Crow, because uh, I make Barone. And then I just uh, basically negate the DD Crow when uh, that comes up. But uh, this uh, won't really matter. Like, uh, Ashuna being banished is fine. I already know all of their interactions. They have a tie in hand. Uh, that's not really a problem. So, I'm going to make uh, Baron here. And now my opponent's at uh, 6800 because of Long One. I mean, if. Uh, their, your opponent is uh, DD Crows here, then I guess you could have you could make uh, changing instead, which is also fine. But uh, but I think I prefer Baron in this case, if uh, my opponent still has two cards in hand. And then I would go Ecclesia into Taya. I go Taya effect, banish uh, the long one, make uh, two tokens, uh, make a token. And then uh, here's an interesting line you can do. You can make Ch uh, Chi Xiao. Uh, go Chi Xiao 1, uh, Taya 2. This is like a, a neat line you can do to like uh, get extra damage on the board. So you go Ashuna, dump Ashuna with Taya, and then banish the blackout with uh, the Chi Xiao. The reason you want to do this is that your Ashuna hadn't been used yet. So you can still uh, summon Shadana from deck and make another Synchro 8 using the blackout token and Shadana. So that's what I would do. I would banish the Ashuna here. I go for Shadana. And then I just made Draco Berserker. And then I go Barone, pop the Moyi, doesn't really matter. And now I pretty much have game on board. I first attack with Draco Berserker into the Chishing. Uh, my opponent would take uh, 1550, so they should be at uh, 5250. And then activate Draco Berserker to uh, gain uh, 2900 attack because it gains original attack instead of uh, the half attack from Droplet. And then I uh, attack again into the Chi Xiao, and the Chi Xiao is at 1400, so my opponent would take 4500, so they're left at 750. And then Chi Xiao attack into the Monk. That's game. That's 8000 damage. That's more than 8000 damage, even. So yeah. Um, uh, I think uh, what you should take away from this is that uh, first you should evaluate uh, your opponent's board and hand. If your opponent has revealed like as much as possible about their hand, then you should take advantage of that. Like in that position earlier, if uh, the Emoye hadn't revealed the Taya, for example, I probably would have um, tried to uh, play around their two cards in hand more carefully because that could be two hand traps. But uh, in uh, uh, this game's case, I already knew, like hypothetically, I already knew my opponent had a tie in hand, so at most they're gonna have one interruption through the droplet. And another is uh, that uh, Long One Pitch Ashuna is uh, insanely valuable because um, Ashuna being in a graveyard with a non effect monster on board can just like generate so much advantage for you. I think that's something uh, everyone should keep in mind. And that, uh, again, Ashuna is the best Tenyi that uh, you want to have access to. And of course, uh, try to identify the identify lethal lines. Because like, Draco Berserker, as mentioned in the Master Guide, is like very important. 
uh, especially for OTK lines. And having uh, the ability to go into it very easily using just a tire uh, can like uh, win you game on win you games on its own. Because like I don't forget that Chi Chao can also banish a sorcerer card from a sorcerer card from the deck like Blackout, and Shadat and Ashuna can summon a level four Tenyi to correspond with the token that you uh, summon off a of Blackout. That way you get another single eight in the process. So that's game one. We go to game two, and my opponent opened, uh, you know, decently well. Valor, Desires, Adhara, Vishuda, uh, Ecclesia, and I opened, you know, completely cracked. This hand is very impressive. It has ten years to like bait out my opponent's interruptions. It has desires to potentially bait out an Ash, and uh, best case scenario, I draw into more, uh, more engine or imperm to deal with my opponent's board. And emergence to uh, get, grant me access to my sorcerer lines. And uh, let's see how this game plays out. So my opponent leads with uh, Ecclesia, which I don't agree with, because um, this uh, line would lose to an Ash. And I think that they should have led with Desires to check if uh, to check to see if I had an Ash, because in most cases I would Ash Desires because like drawing two is way too good. So I think they should have played with Desires. And another thing they could have done was that uh, instead of normal summoning Ecclesia immediately, they could have summoned either Vishuda or Adhara. That way, in the events that they uh, draw into Blackout or Ashuna, then they can uh, use Lan Wan to pitch Ashuna. Ashuna summon the corresponding Tenji to uh, Vishuda or Adhara. In this case, if you have Vishuda on board, you summon Adhara, and if you have Adhara, you uh, summon Vishuda. So that way, you get another another single monster to end on. And if they draw Blackout, then they can just use the body that they summon to uh, pop in the instead of uh, popping Chishou. And in this case, I think I would um, summon Vishuda more often because like it has twenty five hundred defense. So in the case I draw blackout, then uh, it's gonna be harder to beat. All right, so they go for Ecclesia into Moye. They don't get punished by that. Review at Hara, and then uh, they just do the pretty standard line: Shijiao Moye grab uh, Long One, and then Long One pitch at Hara, make uh, Baron, or Mei Chixing. Yeah, the Mei Chixing, and then desires. They drew Ash Imperm, which is like, you know, it's very cracked. Like this hand is uh, approximately six interruptions, seven if you uh, double count Chishing. So, very formidable. And uh, let's see how I navigate through this. All right, so I drew a Shuna for turn. Now here's uh, what's going through my head. Because Chishing is incredibly dangerous against the Ten Yis, I think I want to leave Desires to potentially bait out an Ash. And uh, if I bait out an Ash, then Immersions and Ashuna are more likely to resolve. And furthermore, if the Desires goes through, there's a chance that I might draw more Ten Yis or Imperm. And that Imperm uh, can like shut down uh, Chishing very effectively, and then I could just push with the rest of my Tenyis, and, be and uh, Chisha would not uh, be able to do much about it, because like they're very hard to interact with. They're mostly uh, useful in the graveyard, I guess that's uh, more accurate. Alright, so that's the line of thought right now, and uh, the two sets, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of having a read that one of them is Blackout. So, if one of them is Blackout, then I think uh, that I should kill the Worms first instead of trying to blind snipe the Blackout. And the Worms uh, are just more dangerous in general as well, and the Tennies would uh, help uh, deal with the Worms more effectively. So as I said before, I leave Desires, just like bait something out. I get Ash, pretty normal. Alright, so the Desires got Ash. And now I have to think of a backup plan to deal with Bo Chi Xing and Chi Xiao and potentially a blackout in the back row. 
Uh, so let's consider my options here. I do not think uh, activating emergence into your ten into your sorcerer lines is correct because that loses a Chi Xiao or Chi Xing, and that loses even harder to black out if I summon Long On. So I'm always leaning with the attendees here. The question is, which one? So if I lead with Shuda, then there's a very high chance my opponent's going to be uh, cheating it immediately. And if uh, my opponent cheats it with Shuda, then what's my next play? I'm going to uh, Ashuna summon itself, uh, sack it up for Monk, and then Ashuna to summon either a Vishuda or a uh, Shatana from deck. Either way, I would be able to out one of these. And, you know, that's not good enough, because if one of these is a blackout, and I just eliminate the uh, Chisha regardless, they still have a Chisha. And that blackout can just uh, deal with uh, whatever I search with Emergence anyway. So, ideally in this scenario, I want to deal with both of them. So, Vishuda is not really an option. So... I'm left with the Shuna. If I go with the Shuna now, and they cheating it, then Vishuda would go through. Like I can uh, safely stick uh, Vishuda onto the field, then uh, bounce uh, one of these two, probably the Chi Xiao, and then use a Shuna to summon Shatana from deck to deal with the other. Like that's uh, what's going through uh, my head, because a Shuna can uh, reliably beat both of these, because I already have a Shuna in hand. And that Ashuna can convert into Shatana. So that's uh, what uh, I did. I lead with Ashuna, see if they banish it. And also another thing is that I drew another copy of Ashuna, so I'm not too beat up if this one gets banished because this can still summon uh, a Teddy from deck from the hand. So they don't banish uh, Ashuna here, which I disagree with. I think uh, keeping the Ashuna in the, in the graveyard is way more dangerous, and I get a free body, and they still don't uh, banish uh, the monk here. I mean, uh, the best play would be to banish Ashuna, and then uh, the next best play would be to banish monk, so I don't really get a free summon. And uh, the worst one is just not do anything with uh, Chi Xing. But I guess my opponent didn't really ha know what I have in hand, so... Maybe their line of thought was that um, I could just summon the Vishuda for, with the Ashuna in my graveyard, and that way they can just cheating it for free. So I guess it's not entirely horrible. But that's not what I did. I just Vishuda from hand, banish the cheating, boom. That's one down. And as I said before, I summoned a Shadana from deck, and that immediately checks the Chisha. Because, uh,. Shitana, when a monster, uh, when a non-effect monster is destroyed by battle or card effect, Shitana can special summon it and then pop one of their monsters non-targeting. So I deal with the Chi Xiao. I summon back Monk, I pop the Chi Xiao, and then I get in 2k damage for free. So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, if one of these is a blackout, then uh, the blackout is down. So what could the other set be? It could be an Imperm which uh, would still be bad, because like this hand doesn't really deal with uh, an Imperm that effectively. All right, so let's enter main two, and I will explain my thought process. Okay, the only good play here would be to activate Emergence to search for a Sorcel, and then gonna play that way. The question is, what do you search with uh, this Emergence? You can search Moyi, reveal Ashuna, However, if that gets Imperm, that, that Moe is not doing anything next turn, which I do not uh, like at all. You could search Long One, and then you go Long One, pitch uh, Ashuna, and summon uh, either Changing or Chiching. You can't make Baron because you already use Ashuna. Uh, but the problem with the, uh, making a Synchro 10 here would be that if one of these is, in, is an Imperm, if I'm reading that one of these is an Imperm, then that Chi is not doing anything. Like that Synchro 10 is not doing anything. And I'm left with only Blackout as an interruption. Okay, so what about the third option, Taya? If I search Taya here, 
I can uh, use Tire to like banish Emergence to potentially force a Baxia line and force uh, my opponent to use Imperm now. Uh, in which case, it's fine. I still have uh, Blackout as an interruption and Ashuna in hand for follow up. Now, between uh, Tire and Moye, Tire is better because uh, in the event that I just uh, fire Blackout on my opponent's turn, uh, then I have Blackout in Graveyard for next turn. So, in case if they draw another uh, Imperm, for example, then uh, Tire will still go through because Tire banishes for cost. If they Imperm it, uh, Blackout can just summon the token regardless. So, after considering all of my options, I decided to go with uh, Tire. Because this Tire is going to be very good for follow up. So, they Imperm, which uh, I read correctly. So I'm still guessing that this is probably a blackout, which I mean I can't really do much about that anymore. I just hope, I just need to hope that they don't really draw a worm or like any way to reliably beat my board, because if I still survive, then this Ashuna is gonna go in, and this Tai will also go in. So I set blackout, pass. I don't feel too beat up about it, and then draw a they draw a Shuna for turn, which is an insane top deck. <clears throat> I believe they uh, have lethal through this as well. So, um, Ashuna, Vashuda, Valor, how would you play this in? I mean, if I was my opponent, I'm gonna predict that uh, my po that uh, my opponent has probably like at most two interruptions, and the set could be a blackout or an imperm. Either case, I mean, imperm would be more preferable. And the blackout would be sort of disastrous, but it's still fine at the end of the day. So I would lead with Shooter like uh, most of the time here. I mean, I guess like uh, leading with with a Shooter doesn't really matter either. But in the event that there's something stupid like a call bite, then I'd rather have a Shooter. So my opponent leads with uh, a Shuna here. And then Monk, and here I'm left uh, with uh, a weird decision because if my if my opponent summons like a, a shooter from deck, and then uh, immediately normal summons something like a Taya, then I lose. Like either way, they are going to force out this uh, back row. So I figured that I might I might as well not give them an extra body and hope that they don't have Taya. So that's what I do. I just immediately black out. And that's a droplet. And now uh, they still have a play. They can just go Vishuda here. Now uh, here is where they make a pretty fatal misplay. They normal Valor and then immediately make Chi Xiao. So what was the incorrect play here? They had a Shuna in Graveyard. They also had a Horror in Graveyard. What uh, they could have done, and what they should have done, was that they should have made a, another Monk with uh, Vishuda, and then used the Vishuda in their Graveyard to summon another Vishuda from the deck, and then make uh, Chi Xiao with Valor and uh, Vishuda. That way, they get to search long one with uh, the uh, Chi Xiao, and after that, they have Adhara in Graveyard as well. So they can banish the Adhara for free, add back the Ashuna, and then use long one, pitch Ashuna, and then summon a Changing. This Changing is going to be at like 5400 attack, which is easily over lethal. So they had a lethal line here, but uh, they, uh, I guess they forgot about the attendees being there. So that's just a fatal misplay. So they just grab Blackout here with Zhao. Actually, they could have summoned uh, another Vashuda as well. I don't think there's anything in their uh, desire Spanish that indicate that they are out of Vashudas. So yeah, they should have um, gone for that line. So grab Blackout. And then uh, just beat over my Taya. And then set Blackout. There's still two interruptions, but again, they could have had lethal. And I draw Emergence, and at this point I'm like, yeah, it's over. Because I just use Ashuna. Go for uh, Vishuda. And after that, uh, just make uh, another monk and use Vishuda to bounce the Chi Xiao. They're forced to black out here. 
And then the emergence for Taya, Taya banish the blackout, make a to make two tokens. They just go for a Baxia line, Taya dump uh, Moe, uh, revive and then make a uh, Chi Xiao, make Long One pitch uh, Adhara. So this is pretty crucial since um, the Baxia, the Taya into Baxia into Moe line. If I wanted to like push for lethal, then I needed the the Moe to like draw me a worm. But if I didn't have Lethal, I still had Chi Xiao and they had you know, zero cards in hand, that still would have been fine. I would have been punished by exactly desires into long one plus a discard. But yeah, the I think the Moe line is just uh, so good here. So uh, then I made Shang Yin, which was at like 5,000 attacks, and then boom, that's Lethal. So yeah. Um, that's just uh, the sheer power of Tenny's going second. Like. Um, with uh, just uh, Ashuna, Vishuda, uh, we uh, basically managed to beat the two of their synchros and potentially turn off one of their, one of their back row if uh, we managed to guess that uh, it was exactly Blackout. I think like um, this should be a good case study of like how to utilize your tenies uh, going second. Like you need to like see what the uh, uh, your ten years uh, are capable of, and like how to best sequence them to like bait as much as possible. I think uh, matchup knowledge is also important. Like um, if uh, your if you're trying to read that your opponent has exactly a blackout, then you probably want to prioritize the words first. Which is why Vishuda and uh, Shadana are so good uh, for that. Like just uh, get rid of the bodies for blackout. And uh, yeah, um, aside from that, I don't think like uh, I made any egregious place and I'm hoping that uh, my explanations as to um, uh, for both of our plays like uh, how to uh, uh, most optimally play out the, these hands uh, would have been uh, like sufficient for you to understand how uh, to think when uh, playing this deck so yeah that's a uh, I guess I'm hoping that this is a good addendum to the master guide as well and you know if uh, if people are interested, then I'll probably make more of uh, this, like uh, just more replay analysis, uh, the, that sort of stuff. So yeah, thank you for watching, I'll see you next time.